Hello and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Pastor Eric Buluma. This is the day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and to be glad in it. Today we'll be studying about the virtue that commands your victory. Hallelujah. God wants you to live a life of victory and there is a virtue that has already been released in your life that will command your victory and to their decree it shall be a reality in your life in Jesus name. A text from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In whom we have redemption. Redemption is eternal victory, eternal freedom, eternal blessings that come with the power of the blood of Jesus. So the virtue that commands your victory and your freedom is the blood of Jesus Christ. When you receive the power of the blood of Jesus, there is something that happens to you. He says, in him we have, through his blood, you have forgiveness of sins. You don't ask for things that you already have. You don't ask for things that you already have. For example, he says, through his blood, you have forgiveness of sins. And you have, you know, eternal freedom. Eternal freedom. So when it comes to freedom, you don't beg for freedom. When you feel that you're bound, you don't beg God to set you free. In his blood, you already have freedom. Your freedom is assured. Freedom from sickness and disease. Freedom from poverty. Freedom from curses. In his blood, you have freedom. In his blood, you have victory. Glory to God. You see, when the children of Israel are being brought out, of bondage God had to tell them to you know to cover their houses with the blood in the days of Egypt the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13 the blood on the houses where you are staying will distinguish them when I see the blood I will pass over you no plague will come in no sickness will come in no evil will come into the house to destroy you why the blood of the lamp is going to distinguish you you see when you're under the cover of the blood of Jesus what it ha what happens in the realm of the spirit you become distinguished you are set apart you are different sickness and disease cannot settle in your house powers of darkness cannot be allowed to come into your house and that's why he said we shall observe the feast the children of Israel are told to observe the feast of the unleavened bread in the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 17. And it says you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread for in this self, uh, self same day I have brought to your enemies out of, of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day for your generations by an ordinance forever. He brought them out of bondage through the blood of the lamb. He brought them out of of curses through the blood of the lamb. He brought them out of poverty through the blood that was shed, the blood of the lamb. In Zechariah chapter 1, as, uh, Zechariah chapter 1, verse, one verse, verse 11, it says, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set forth my prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. By the blood of thy covenant, I have set the prisoners free so you cannot be under the cover of the blood of Jesus and your life remains in the pit of bondage in the pit of sickness to their decree in Jesus name the blood of Jesus upon you the blood of Jesus upon your house I plead the blood of Jesus in your car as you travel the blood of Jesus will surround the plane we surround the car so that your car, your house, your life is distinguished from evil. Evil is not permitted to come in. Glory to God. You see, through the blood of Jesus, you have assured victory that is already released in your life. The blood of Jesus bears witness in your life. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, the Bible says, The three that bear witness, the word, the spirit, the word as the witness, the spirit representing the anointing and the blood as the last card is the ultimate weapon of war. 
three that gives you witness the word the spirit and the blood the word is the witness of your victory the spirit manifests the anointing and the power and the blood of Jesus is the last card for your ultimate weapon of war that assures you of victory Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 the Bible says, and they overcame him, talking about the devil in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9. He says, the devil, who is the red dragon, has been cast down. And in verse 11, in context of talking about the enemy, he says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. So it doesn't say you are going to overcome him. That's not what it says. He says, we overcame him by the blood of Jesus. And that's why when you begin to flow in the reality of the blood of Jesus you walk in the witness of the spirit for there are three first John 5 7 as you've read there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost affirming your grace in your life glory to God in first John chapter 1 and verse 7 first John chapter 1 and verse 7 the Bible says as we walk in the light as he is in the light and we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Sanctifies us. Makes us clean and qualified in his presence. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. He says come with boldness. So that we, we, with the blood of Jesus we enter into the Holy of Holies. We have boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies with the blood of Jesus. So when you come to the throne of grace, where you're going to receive your victory and your blessing, you come with boldness. Your boldness to come into the holy presence of God does not come from your good character. It does not come from your actions. It comes from the power of the blood of Jesus. He says we have boldness to enter into the holy of holies with the blood of Jesus. So in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, that boldness that we have to come to the presence of God to receive the blessing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, we have boldness. We have boldness to enter in. We have boldness to come into the presence of God. We have boldness. Glory to God. He says, having therefore boldness to come. He says, come to the throne of grace with boldness that you may obtain mercy. And find grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace for all your need you see when you come with the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus cleanses you and now you have boldness to come into the presence of God he doesn't allow you to have condemnation in your spirit glory to God the blood of Jesus gives you the grace to have boldness and you come with boldness he says you obtain mercy and then you obtain grace you see, mercy and grace are very important. Why? Because mercy says you are not going to receive the punishment that is due to you. You deserve to be punished. But when you receive the mercy of God, it means the punishment that you deserve, it is going to be removed. You're not going to receive the punishment that you deserve. And once you receive the mercy, he says, come and receive the grace of God from the throne. He says, now, the grace of God says this in your life. The grace of God says you're not going, you're going to receive the blessings you don't deserve. You're going to receive the favor you don't even deserve. Grace is the unmerited favor, the undeserved favor that has been released in your life. And to their decree, may you have confidence in the grace of God. I'm talking about the virtue of victory. Why will you experience victory? Because the other point is this. The blood of Jesus always speaks better things in your life. And if you're under the cover of the blood of Jesus that keeps talking and declaring better things in your life, you're going to have an experience of better things every day. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 24, and, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. 
So the blood of Jesus speaks better things in your life than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus speaks better things in your life. It speaks better things in your life. The other point you want to understand about the power of the blood of Jesus is in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. The power of the blood of Jesus blots out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Remember what was happening to the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. And from the cross, the handwriting, there was a handwriting in the realm of the spirit that was against you. You know, sometimes you feel in the spirit that there, there is hindrance. There is hindrance in the realm of the spirit. You feel like the, your prayers are hindered. Your blessings are hindered. Your finances are hindered. Your promotion are hindered. Sometimes you even fast and pray. But you realize there is something hindering. I want to uh, bring to your attention the power of the blood of Jesus. When you begin to understand what the blood of Jesus can do for you, that the blood of Jesus blots out the handwriting that is against you. Maybe there is a handwriting in the realm of the spirit decreed by the powers of darkness that you'll never go out of this country, that you'll never be promoted, that you'll always be sick. By the power of the blood of Jesus, the handwriting that was against your progress, the handwriting that was against your spiritual breakthrough, the handwriting that was against your prosperity, the handwriting that was against the blessings flowing in your family, the Bible says it has been blotted away. And then he says he took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. Meaning when you receive this grace by the power of the blood of Jesus, whatever was written in the realm of the spirit against you, it is taken out of the way. It is removed. It will never be found again in your life. The other point is through the power of the blood of Jesus on the cross. We see in the book of Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. Amen. He says, having disarmed, God disarmed the principalities and the powers. Colossians 2.15. God disarmed the principalities and the powers. He disarmed them. You see, this is a reality that happened on the cross. It is no longer the same before the cross. Before the cross, before Jesus hung on the cross, they had weapons. The enemy had weapons. And that's why God said in Isaiah 54 verse 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Because they had weapons to form. But now, where did they get those weapons? They got those weapons in Genesis chapter 3. When Adam fell, he committed the greatest treason in the world. And then he, gave, he handed over power to, 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 to the enemy. He handed over weapons to the enemy. The enemy now has power and authority. But when Jesus died and hung on the cross, something happened in your life. Something happened in your life. The power of the blood of Jesus. Through the power of the blood of Jesus, God disarmed principalities, meaning they no longer have anything against you. I conclude with this in Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. When Jesus hung on the cross, shed his blood, guess what the blood of Jesus did for you? The Bible says he delivered you from every curse by becoming a curse on your behalf when he hung on the cross where he shed his blood Meaning there is no curse that is allowed to settle in your life because of the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Maybe you're watching right now and you're saying, Pastor, being blessed by that word. And I want to give my life to Christ. Please repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive the forgiveness of sins. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I declare today, I'm born again. I'm a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Right now, to pray for you in the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, you need deliverance. You need God to touch you. Just lay your hands wherever you need the touch of God right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for everyone that is watching. And I pray for everyone that by faith they have laid their hands wherever there is that sickness. I bind that spirit of infirmity. 
I command the spirit of sickness and disease and oppression and poverty and lack to come out of your life in Jesus' name. I command every evil spirit to come out of your house in the name of Jesus. And now be healed in Jesus' name. Be set free right now. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Receive victory in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right now to share with you the verse of the day. Our verse of the day is from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 is the verse of the day. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Through his grace, through his power of the blood of Jesus, you have been set free. And that is your word for the day. And I believe God is going to bless you today in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord open doors for you. In Jesus' name we pray.